and welcome to our GFM talk on harnessing the power of knowledge. Uh, today we'd like to talk to you about substantive and disciplinary knowledge. So, our curriculums and lessons should be covering substantive and disciplinary knowledge so that our learners can know more, uh, remember more and learn more. So a writer on this area, Christine Council, uh, has summed it up quite well, stating we give pupils the means to understand what and how powerful knowledge comes about. We make them critical thinkers and handlers of knowledge rather than just passive collectors of facts. So recently in a CPD session that we delivered uh, to the SLT, uh, we challenged our colleagues to say uh, something in a language they may not have understood. Uh, so we challenged them to say a place name in Wales, which was Llanvair Pushgwingil Gogerit Gwyndrogwit Llantaseliog Ogov Goch. We placed it up on the board as the place name, which is just one long word, uh, and asked them to try and, uh, and, and say it, thinking they probably wouldn't be able to do it. However, somebody did put their hand up and did have a good go at doing it, uh, having had a, a, a Welsh grandfather that had taught him uh, in the past. And whilst it was fairly accurate, uh, he was unable to actually say what it was. So we broke the, uh, the, the word down and challenged more staff to, to, to give it a go. Uh, and whilst we could have taught them the individual words, uh, they would have had no understanding in terms of what that substantive facts that we delivered uh, was, because there was no prior knowledge uh, assigned to those facts. So what's the difference? Substantive knowledge is domain specific. It's factual. It has sequential flow uh, for the information required. It requires subject and technical vocabulary. There are rules and methods in terms of science and maths. Uh, it has procedural fluency and the structure of learning content is specific to those facts. Whereas disciplinary knowledge is conceptual uh, and it's related to the information. It's the big ideas that we want our students to learn. They're connected arguments in there with in opinions and interpretations. Uh, critical arguments as well, which are for and against, and it allows them to actually make their opinions. So the definition for substantive knowledge, as we've said, is the facts, the people, the events, the dates, and the features that we want our students to be able to learn. Disciplinary knowledge, however, is knowing how that knowledge works in that subject and ensuring our students uh, are able to use it and question it clearly. The focus is on the learning in depth and the understanding of it and not just the coverage of it. So a good everyday example uh, will be using a remote control at home. Often we get home, we put the TV on, it doesn't work. You point it at the television, it's still not working. You give it a bang, it's still not working. You give it a clean, try it again, it's still not working. We've gone through various independent uh, variables. By that point you're thinking, mm, the batteries might be a bit tired, so you're going to turn them over, take them out. I used to turn them around, sometimes I give them a little rub, get them a bit warm, put them, you know you've done it, you put them back in, is it working? No, it's still not working, okay, I'm gonna need some new batteries. So they are the control variables that we try to see if they work. That is applying the knowledge of understanding that it could be a faulty connection by giving it a bang, there could be an issue with the, the front, so you can give it a clean. Finally, we're gonna check the batteries. So we know those independent facts, but we're able to use disciplinary knowledge to put them all together to try and get the remote control working again. So as departments and as teachers, we need to make sure our teaching and learning is coherent, well sequenced and taught in a manner that incorporates both disciplinary and substantive knowledge. So within our subject areas, we've said substantive knowledge means knowing the facts and the information. In geography, knowing the name of a country. And if asked where that is, being able to describe its location using longitude and latitude, the countries that it shares a border with, whether it's got a coastline on the sea or ocean, and using key terminology such as equator, the Tropic of Cancer or Capricorn, or being able to say that it's landlocked. So those are all areas of substantive knowledge that children will learn as they move through their geography curriculum. But the disciplinary knowledge takes those facts and that knowledge of place and allows students to apply it critically. I use phrases when I'm teaching like think like a geographer or speak like a geographer. So if we go back to that idea of being landlocked, here's a map that shows the 44 landlocked countries uh, in the world and two of them being double landlocked. The substantive knowledge a student would be able to say those countries do not have a coastline. They're surrounded by other countries on all sides. 
but the disciplinary knowledge takes that and applies it. And at different stages of education, children will do it in different ways. So in infant school, a pupil might make the inference that a landlocked country, if they live in a landlocked country, they can't go to the seaside and build a sandcastle. To do that, they'd have to go to another country. They might even be able to say they'd have to go abroad on holiday. When we get into secondary school, and that substantive knowledge through their geography curricula has grown, when we talk about landlocked countries in year 10 or 11, we want students to be able to make inferences to do with the GDP in those countries. This slide shows that the GDP of landlocked countries is lower. And we want children to be able to understand and explain why that is. They would understand that being landlocked doesn't just mean you can't go to the seaside, but you're missing out on ocean trading routes. To trade with another country, they're going to have to go through another and pay tariffs and export and import duty. They that, may, they, well, they may, they may even have studied business studies, so, so they would develop these, these substantive facts already, absolutely. and then again be able to apply it in the disciplinary knowledge that you were talking about. Absolutely. And, and it just shows just the phenomenal amount of substantive knowledge that these students are going to need to have from other subjects in order to be able to apply it correctly. Substantive knowledge of trade, tariff, import, export, GDP, and all of those terminology that they're not using in other parts of life. So it's also worth taking a moment to see how this will apply to less academically traditional classroom subjects such as art, drama, or music. So again, substantive is the fact. So in music, for year seven recently, they've been learning West African drumming. So for them, they've learned about the different tones they can make on the drum, the name of the drum, where the drum originates from geographically, and that's been part of their important learning. But the disciplinary side of that has been the outcome for them to create a group piece, which is a West African drumming piece. They've had to use all that substantive fact, but critically think, and as Phil said, think in this case like a musician, and specifically a West African drummer, to create a piece that uses all that information with the desired outcome. In year nine, the children have been doing electronic dance music. And again, we've listened to famous musicians, we've listened to instrumentation, we've looked at structure, our substantive knowledge, but again, ask them to be disciplinary in the fact that they create a piece that applies that critically, thinking about what they leave in, leave out, what they draw their influences from, and then be able to justify that. To take it even further, I know of university students who are asked to say who is a better musician, Mozart or Fatboy Slim. Even then, requiring all that substantive knowledge of what those musicians have done, who those musicians are, but then critically analyse and reflect and apply the, all that knowledge to come up with an answer of who they think would be better. Do you see just how much substantive knowledge is required if pupils are going to use it effectively in their disciplinary knowledge. Our curriculum needs to be really cleverly constructed to enable that knowledge to be built upon year after year. We need to plan our topics and schemes so that as they build that substantive knowledge, they can apply it within the discipline. We need to provide opportunities for knowledge recall, retrieval practice, interleaving, spiral curriculum, so that that knowledge is built upon and used, otherwise they lose it. Let me pose you a question as we come towards the end. How amazing would it be if in your subject area, when asking pupils questions, they were drawing upon the, the substantive knowledge from other subject areas and applying it through their disciplinary knowledge in your subject area. For example, in science, if you presented a graph that shows global average temperature change, and they used their substantive knowledge from maths to analyze and draw the trends from that graph. But alongside that, they've got their chemistry knowledge of what's causing that. The kinetic energy stored within carbon dioxide molecules as they absorb infrared radiation emitted from Earth, which is causing the global atmosphere to warm. But they also then link that to geography, where they're learning about the sources of greenhouse gases in the different geography lessons they have. Further to this, they could also draw from what they've been learning in social action. 
as well as even prior to secondary, their primary substantive knowledge of what different writers are like, but apply that disciplinary to create a persuasive, have an author's voice that persuades someone, combining this all to create something that would challenge peers to reduce their carbon footprint through a presentation or poster. They could even draw in the data that they've been analysing in computing, put it into an Excel spreadsheet, and then be able to analyse that data and draw it out so you actually see the patterns that are coming through. And provide the evidence for what they're presenting. Yeah. What a curriculum that would be, where substantive knowledge built in isolation in the different subject areas that we teach within begins to bubble and boil and overflow beyond the boundaries of those subjects so that the young people are truly showing the power of knowledge that they have and using it in their lessons. Is that a dream or can we make it a reality? If we grasp an understanding of substantive and disciplinary knowledge, if our curricula are shaped by this and cleverly constructed to build steadily that substantive knowledge year upon year in such a way that cross-curricular links can both be embedded and occur spontaneously, we'll have a really exciting, transforming curriculum that enables our pupils and colleagues to really enjoy learning and have powerful knowledge. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for watching our GFM talk uh, this evening. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any further questions, please come and talk to us about it. Thank you very much.